18, Ashley Hunter. At first glance, 27-year-old Ashley Hunter seemed to be enjoying her first year of marriage to her husband, 29-year-old Nicholas Hunter. She openly gushed about how happy she was in several social media posts, and there seemed to be no reason for anyone to think otherwise. But things are not always what they seem. In January 2015, something went terribly wrong when Nicholas was shot seven times inside the couple's St. Louis, Missouri home. He tragically passed away at the scene, and Ashley confessed that she shot him during a heated fight. A week after the shooting, police officers arrested Ashley on suspicion of first-degree murder. During the ride to jail, she jumped out of the vehicle and ran right in front of an ambulance, raising serious concerns over her mental health. She spent the next four years maintaining her innocence from behind bars, claiming that she only acted in self-defense while shooting her husband. During trial, Ashley argued that Nicholas was in a rage when she got home that day. Their argument started out as a simple verbal disagreement, but soon escalated to threats and physical violence. When Nicholas tried to wrap his hands around her throat, she went into survival mode and made a grab for his gun. In a surprising turn of events, a jury acquitted Ashley in 2019. She told local news station KSDK that it felt liberating to finally put the truth out there and have her name be cleared. After her agonizing experience with the justice system, she said she was inspired to help other domestic violence survivors and hoped to eventually earn her law degree. 17. Cameron Zellinger 32-year-old schoolteacher Cameron Zellinger was just married six months earlier when she was caught having an extremely inappropriate relationship with one of her students at the high school in Riverside, California, where she worked. The misconduct was discovered by the underage victim's mother, who went through her daughter's phone and discovered explicit messages exchanged between the teen and her teacher. According to investigators, the suspect also physically multiple occasions, and the inappropriate activity lasted for a several-month period. The young woman's mum, Shatera Rodriguez, later told Fog6 that she instinctively knew something seemed wrong, even though her daughter insisted everything was fine. Rodriguez said her daughter was beyond traumatized and had been terrified to speak up, and that the team was still dealing with the emotional aftermath of the abuse two years later. Zellinger was immediately arrested and fired from her job. In 2019, she pleaded guilty to one felony and two misdemeanors relating to her crimes. She was sentenced to spend 120 days in weekend jail and will be a registered offender for the rest of her life. 16. Jared Dickus In January 2023, a worried couple called the police station to report a death at their property near Magnolia, Texas. Deputies gone there and found the home covered in blood, along with the decapitated remains of the couple's daughter-in-law, 21-year-old Angie Diaz. Their son, as well as the victim's husband, 22-year-old Jared Dickers, was also at the scene. Angie had been killed with a kitchen knife, and Jared immediately became the prime suspect in the case. It seemed very likely that he killed his wife based on his erratic behavior during a drunk driving stop made two months earlier. During the previous arrest, Jared allegedly threatened law enforcement and jail staff while extremely agitated. He exhibited a troubling pattern of violence and unpredictable mood swings, and was even seen punching windows of the jail. Police arrested Jared on suspicion of Angie's murder and booked him into the Waller County Jail, where he currently remains held on $1 million bond while awaiting trial. 15. Aaron Gilliams 34-year-old Crystal Hanshaw was discovered clinging to life with a gunshot wound to her face at her St. Charles, Missouri home back in 2020. She died due to her injuries, and suspicion instantly fell on her husband of eight short months, 31-year-old Aaron Gilliams. According to authorities, the deadly shooting was the result of a fight that spiraled out of control despite the couple's lack of a history of domestic violence. Gilliams allegedly confessed to shooting his wife, claiming that Crystal was flailing her arms around and struck him in the face. He then retrieved a 45 caliber pistol from the bedroom and pointed it directly at Crystal's face, while telling her that he never should have gotten married to her. Crystal allegedly told Gilliams that he wouldn't dare pull the trigger, and he apparently took that as a challenge. He was charged with first-degree murder and armed criminal action. 
almost four years later, there have been practically no updates on the case, and records show that Gilliams is not in state custody. The current status of the case is uncertain. 14. Stephanie Ginas While responding to a domestic disturbance call made from a Hilton hotel in Naples, Florida back in 2022, police met a disheveled crying bride with blood spatter on her wedding dress and a torn strap. Her mother informed officers that her newlywed daughter, 32-year-old Stephanie Ginas, had gotten into some sort of altercation with her new husband, 43-year-old John Gerhard. By then, Gerhard had already left the property in his car. Ginas allegedly told the police that she started the fight, but wound up having to physically defend herself when it suddenly turned into a wrestling match. According to a police report, she suffered from bruises, a bloody nose, a busted lip, and even a swollen eye. She was evaluated by paramedics at the scene, but declined to seek out further medical treatment. While officers were interviewing Ginas, her husband called his new father-in-law and told him that Ginas headbutted him and broke his nose. Law enforcement's report noted that Gerhard eventually came back to the hotel and took responsibility for causing his wife's injuries. He also declined to receive medical attention. Inside the hotel room, police saw a bloody dress shirt and washcloth, along with fresh bloodstains on the carpet, linens, bathroom floor, and desk. Gerhard and Ginas were both charged with domestic battery and taken to the Collier County Jail. They were released the next day on $1,000 bond. 13. Nathaniel D'Amato a newlywed woman in Cypress, Texas was more than likely shocked to discover that her husband, 46-year-old Nathaniel D'Amato, had a few other wives. The two had tied the knot in April 2018, and the discovery of D'Amato's multiple wives came just two months later. After getting both phone calls and emails from the other women, the newest wife decided to report D'Amato to law enforcement. It seemed as if D'Amato had never bothered divorcing his past partners before deciding to move on to the next. He was still legally married to a woman in Michigan whom he'd exchanged vows with 20 years earlier, and he may have had as many as three other brides or common-law girlfriends in the time since. D'Amato's newest wife kicked him out of their house and moved on after discovering the news. She told ABC 13 that she was already happy with how her life was going when D'Amato came along and that she'd expected him to be the icing on her cake. But she certainly didn't need him to have a fulfilling life, and since he proved to be more trouble than he was worth, she was happy to go back to the single life. Deputies arrested D'Amato outside the fire station in Magnolia, where he'd been a volunteer firefighter for two years. Constable Mark Herman later told ABC 13 News that he believed the suspect was trying to hide from law enforcement at the station. D'Amato was charged with one count of felony bigamy, which can carry a maximum 99-year prison sentence. State records show that he's not currently serving prison time, indicating that he most likely resolved the situation without any major consequences. It's unclear whether authorities ever charged him with additional bigamy cases. 12. Mi Sun Yu 31-year-old American businessman Dai Kyung Sung fell hard after meeting his future wife, 26-year-old Mi Sun Yu, while she was visiting Los Angeles as a tourist. He missed her so much after she went back home to Korea that he married her during her next trip to the US just a few months later, in March 2017, even though they hadn't been dating for long at all and hardly knew each other. Not surprisingly, it didn't take long for the couple to realize that perhaps they weren't as compatible as they'd first thought. They were both extremely heavy drinkers who accused one another of drinking too much. The domestic violence that happened between them also went both ways. Lee and Yu tried to fix their already broken marriage by writing out bizarre contracts with specific requirements for one another. They both promised to stop letting their fights get physical and to get their drinking habits under control. On her contract for Lee, Yu wrote that she expected to always be his number one. She couldn't stand that Lee enjoyed playing video games because she felt like she had to compete with them to get her husband's attention. The couple almost reached their breaking point when Yu threatened to move back to Korea, while Lee told people that he was considering filing for divorce. 
But the final test that would make or break the relationship came in July 2017, only four months after you and Lee officially tied the knot. It started with you drinking heavily during dinner with a friend at a restaurant in LA's Koreatown neighborhood. The women then went to a karaoke bar that Lee happened to own and continued guzzling down all kinds of booze. Throughout the night, you even used cocaine to counteract the effects of the alcohol. She and her friend were still living it up and partying when Lee joined them at 3 a.m. and also started drinking heavily. You and Lee went home at 4.30 a.m. Less than a half hour later, you called 911 in a panic and asked for help. The couple lived across the street from a police station, so it didn't take long for officers to get to the home, where they found you in a hysterical state, with blood dripping from her hands. In a back room, they discovered Lee dead in a chair with a kitchen knife plunged into his chest, all the way up to the handle. When officers asked what happened, you claimed that a Hispanic man had entered the home and stabbed Lee during a physical struggle. But there was no evidence of a home invasion or burglary at the scene, and the couple's troubled marriage only added to investigators' suspicions that you had killed her husband herself. She told several conflicting stories and claimed that she couldn't remember much of what happened after she and Lee got home. Under immense pressure from interrogators, you ultimately admitted to killing Lee. She initially said that Lee didn't hit her first, but later changed her story and pointed the finger at her dead husband as the alleged instigator. In 2018, a jury convicted you of second-degree murder. She was sentenced to 16 years to life in prison and will become eligible for parole around 2026. 11. Zarius Ray Hildebrand in August 2023, when Army National Guardsman Saria Barney Hildebrand didn't show up to work in Anchorage, Alaska, her friends immediately grew concerned for her well-being. The 21-year-old combat medic had sent a text message to her co-workers letting them know that she was on her way there, only for them to receive another text 45 minutes later stating that she was not actually coming into work that day. When Saria still hadn't come home the next morning, her husband reported her missing. Zarius Ray Hildebrandt told police officers that the couple had gone out to celebrate his 21st birthday the night before his wife disappeared. The couple met during basic training in the summer of 2022 and tied the knot only a few months later. They'd been married for about eight months total when Zarius disappeared. Zarius claimed that his wife left for work somewhere between 9 and 10 a.m. on the day she went missing, yet he had her cell phone with him. He said Saria accidentally left it at home, which could only mean that he had to have sent the text messages to her friends stating that she wasn't coming to work. Despite this strange discrepancy, Zarius claimed to know nothing about the texts. On the day of Saria's disappearance, he was seen stopping at a store three separate times and buying various cleaning supplies, bedsheets, and a mattress cover. When police visited Zarius the next day, he initially allowed them to look around, but stopped them from searching beneath the bed, claiming that there were a few embarrassing items under it. Authorities came back to the house with a warrant and discovered that the couple's mattress was saturated in blood. A few days later, Saria's lifeless body was spotted in a storm drain. She had been shot in the head, and prosecutors charged Zarius in connection with her death. Besides murder, the defendant also faces one count of tampering with evidence and is now being held in custody while he awaits trial. His motive for the crime is unclear. 10. Matthew Phelps In a strange 911 call from September 2017, a Raleigh, North Carolina man named Matthew Phelps reported finding his wife of less than a year dead on the floor of their apartment. The conversation became concerning when he confessed that he was holding a bloody knife and believed he was the one who murdered 29-year-old Lauren Hugelmeyer Phelps. According to the first of several stories Matthew gave to officers, he claimed that he'd fallen asleep earlier that night after taking too much cold medicine. He then woke up a little after midnight and found Lauren lying face down on the floor, covered in stab wounds. Matthew leaned heavily on his claims that he took a large amount of medicine in an attempt to feel better, but investigators didn't buy it, so he was arrested on suspicion of first-degree murder that same day. Lauren's family challenged Matthew's version of events and pointed fingers directly at him, 
claiming that he'd meticulously planned the murder well in advance. The young woman's loved ones also noticed that she hadn't been herself lately. In hindsight, they thought she was being abused by her husband. A few months before her death, Lauren discovered some disturbing details about Matthew's first marriage. His first wife accused him of assault and had lied to Lauren about the nature of the separation. By the time she uncovered this information, Lauren had already started to suspect Matthew of cheating and had told her sister that she was going to leave him. All things considered, it seemed as if Matthew killed Lauren in a rage after learning that she wanted to end their marriage. Or perhaps he wanted her out of the picture so he could live how he wanted without having to answer to her. In October 2018, Phelps pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and was sentenced to spend life in prison without parole. He apologized to Lauren's family, but after the devastation he inflicted upon them for no reason, they were understandably not in a forgiving mood. 9. Jordan Graham It's normal for someone to get cold feet on their wedding day, but 22-year-old Jordan Graham looked completely miserable when she got married to Cody Johnson in 2013. Instead of backing out at the last minute like she should have, she decided to go through with the ceremony. Eight days later, Jordan and Cody went for a hike in Montana's Glacier Park. Jordan returned home alone, and when people started to notice that Cody was missing, she claimed that he'd gone out with friends and never came back home. Law enforcement suspected Jordan of knowing more than she was letting on, especially since she never bothered to report Cody's disappearance to the police. It was the young man's boss who alerted the authorities to his absence, and Jordan only proceeded to dig herself a deeper hole when she claimed to have gotten an anonymous email telling her not to waste time looking for Cody. The email said that Cody fell off a cliff and was dead. Lo and behold, Jordan was the one who somehow discovered her husband's body during a search at the park a day later. Cody was at the bottom of a 200-foot cliff, but detectives were convinced it was no accident. Under pressure from interrogators, Jordan finally broke down and admitted that she shoved Cody off the cliff. She was charged with murder, leaving the couple's friends and relatives shocked by the horrific turn of events that had taken place during what was supposed to be one of the happiest times of the couple's lives. Everyone thought that Jordan and Cody were a great match, and they couldn't imagine why Jordan would ever want to kill her husband. Cody loved that Jordan came from a good Christian household and wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, and he was more than determined to give her that life. Lauren had started to tell her friends that she was having second thoughts a day after the wedding, but nobody seemed to think that she really meant it, and they certainly didn't think she was capable of murder. Jordan took a plea deal and admitted to second-degree murder in exchange for a more lenient 30-year sentence, followed by five years of probation. As part of the agreement, she was required to give an honest account of what happened. She explained that she was terrified of being intimate due to her straight conservative upbringing. And while a normal person would have either tried to work through the issue or leave the relationship, Jordan decided that murder was the only answer to her predicament. 8. Ronald John Candiel In early 2020, temperatures in Calgary, Alberta were below freezing when a tense fight broke out in the middle of the night between Ronald Candiel and his newlywed wife, Melissa Ray Blomart. The couple was driving in the city's Bowness neighborhood in a U-Haul when the argument grew so heated that Melissa decided it'd be better to walk in the cold and jumped out of the vehicle. As she stormed off on foot, Ronald mowed her down with the truck. He then proceeded to turn the car around and drove off, passing by Melissa as she lay helplessly dying on the snow-covered pavement. Earlier that day, the couple had been evicted from an affordable housing unit. On top of already being in a bad situation, Ronald had a long history of domestic violence against Melissa. At the time of the murder, there were already court orders in place for him and Melissa to stay away from each other, but they weren't being followed. When questioned by police officers, Ronald denied being with Melissa that night and acted like he didn't even know that she was dead. After being charged with his wife's murder, Ronald argued in court that her death was just an accident. He insisted that he didn't see her before hitting her with the truck, while the prosecution accused him of deliberately failing to stop and offer assistance to Melissa. In 2021, Ronald Candiel was found guilty of second-degree murder. He 
You were sentenced to serve life with a minimum of 16 years in prison before becoming eligible for parole. While handing down the punishment, the judge condemned spousal murder as one of society's most despicable crimes and described the defendant as a danger to society, who demonstrated a reprehensible abuse of power. 7. Michelle Escoto 21-year-old Wendy Trapaga's newly wedded happiness lasted only four days before tragedy struck in October 2002. She'd just married 30-year-old Michelle Escoto when she was discovered murdered in a warehouse parking lot. Escoto married Wendy specifically for the purpose of killing her for a $1 million life insurance payout. He certainly wasn't in the marriage for love, which was something he got on the side from his secret girlfriend, Yolanda Serio. Before ever meeting Wendy, Escoto lived with Yolanda. He abruptly moved out of Yolanda's apartment, leaving her devastated and heartbroken before moving into Wendy's apartment. When Yolanda crossed paths with Escoto outside a restaurant one night, she confronted him about her feelings, which was when he revealed his secret plan to kill Wendy and return to her. The clandestine pair planned to use Wendy's life insurance payout to run off and start a new life together. Escoto drugged his new wife until she fell unconscious, then drove to Yolanda's house with her body in the passenger seat of his car. Yolanda followed Escoto to the warehouse where Wendy's body was later spotted and drove around while Escoto fatally strangled and bludgeoned the victim. After the murder was carried out, Yolanda found her murderous boyfriend walking down the street with a bloody tire iron still in his hand. Police discovered Trapaga's remains a few days later, but they were at a loss to identify the killer. In the meantime, Escoto moved back in with Yolanda, but their relationship was different this time. Escoto was allegedly abusive, and he intimidated Yolanda into not calling the police by reminding her of the role she played in Wendy's murder. Collecting the insurance payout was more difficult than Escoto expected. He eventually filed a lawsuit in an attempt to get his hands on the money, but all this led to the realization that he was telling inconsistent stories about Wendy's death. Law enforcement eventually got involved, and in 2005, Escoto was charged with murder. The case was still pending the next year when Yolanda decided to work with the prosecution. Another five years went by before she confessed everything she knew. She was never charged in connection to the murder and took the stand against Escoto when the case went to trial in 2014. Yolanda testified that she and Escoto originally planned to drown her in a jacuzzi and staged the scene to make it look like an accident. But Wendy woke up and fought back, making it too difficult for Escoto to drown her. It was at that point that they moved to Plan B, which was to drive to the warehouse and kill Wendy there. The jury found Escoto guilty of first-degree murder, which carries an automatic life sentence without parole in the state of Florida. 6. Bob J. Cole 46-year-old Bob J. Cole served almost three decades in prison for murder and had just recently regained his freedom when he was accused of killing a second time in December 2019. The tragedy came only four days after Cole married 31-year-old Brittany Nicole Parker whose lifeless body was discovered in a field by farmers. An autopsy revealed that she died from an accidental overdose of methamphetamine, but investigators suspected that Cole moved his bride's body to the location it was found. He started to look even more suspicious when he sold his car the day after Parker's body was found. Law enforcement seized the suspect's SUV from the dealership and found evidence that Parker's body had been moved in the vehicle. During questioning, Cole initially claimed that Parker vanished during a disagreement between the two. By the time Cole was charged with one felony count of concealing a death, he was already back in prison for a violation on his parole. His freedom was extremely short-lived, and he'll never experience normal life outside prison walls again. It's unclear what exactly happened with the concealment charge, but records show that he was convicted of another murder and sentenced to life. 5. Dr. George Scott Sampson We've discussed marriages that tragically ended after a few short months, but some only last for mere hours. This was the case for a 54-year-old anesthesiologist from Indiana named George Scott Sampson and his wife, 50-year-old Kelly Ecker, who couldn't even make it through their reception without fighting. 
Wedding guests notice growing tensions between the couple during the event. The awkwardness and apprehension of the atmosphere only got worse when Samson left the reception early. After the event, Samson and Eka held an after-party at their mansion in Terre Haute, where it became abundantly clear to visitors that the pair were upset with each other. News reports initially speculated that Eka was angry about signing a prenuptial agreement. Witnesses later clarified that Samson was mad because he'd gone to pay for the reception and discovered that Eka had maxed out his credit card before the ceremony. The fact that he was highly intoxicated also didn't help. As the argument went on, people started leaving due to the uncomfortable atmosphere. As the final guests walked out at 1.17 a.m., they asked Eka if she wanted to go with them. Eka regrettably turned down their offer. Just three minutes later, she called 911 and said that her husband was going to kill her. The call disconnected before she could provide the dispatcher with an address. Two more brief calls took place over the next few minutes, with a series of gunshots being the last thing the dispatcher heard before losing contact. Officers arrived at the scene to find Eka dead with gunshot wounds in her head. Samson had mercilessly pumped seven bullets into her at point-blank range using a 40 caliber pistol. He also didn't survive the incident. Inside the house, police recovered dozens of weapons. Samson and Eka reportedly had a history of vicious fighting. Their relationship appeared so toxic to Eka's parents that they refused to go to the wedding. In hindsight, their refusal to support their daughter's marriage makes sense. 4. Michael Roberts from the outside looking in, 26-year-old Michael Roberts and his 25-year-old wife Vicky Roberts seem like the picture-perfect couple. But reality was much different behind closed doors for the British couple, mostly thanks to Michael's infidelity. Michael first started cheating on Vicky with a co-worker a few months before their wedding in 2009. By the time the couple exchanged vows, he had already had at least two affairs. The second affair was with a different co-worker, who believed that Michael and Vicky had broken up. Vicky didn't become overly suspicious that Michael was cheating until a few months into their union. They eventually started sleeping separately, but Vicky told her friends that she wasn't ready to give up. The couple had been married for just five months when Vicky's friends and family received text messages from her claiming that she'd left Michael for another man. Knowing this would have been extremely out of character for Vicky to do, someone got the police involved. While law enforcement searched the Roberts' home in Runcorn, Cheshire, Michael slipped out of sight and fled the area. He disappeared right as an officer started searching the garage where Vicky's murdered body was found. Michael spent four days staying in various hotels under an alias before police finally caught up with him. He claimed that he accidentally strangled Vicky to death during a kinky bedroom game, but the circumstances of the case told a much different story. At the time of Vicky's death, Michael had at least four separate affairs under her belt, including some that overlapped one another. According to prosecutors, Vicky was extremely forgiving when she found out about her husband's cheating. Unwilling to throw the towel in on their marriage, she tried persuading Michael to be faithful. He vowed to stop sleeping around, but failed at keeping his promise. Authorities believe that Vicky eventually grew fed up and tried to put her foot down, only to end up paying for it with her life. Just minutes after killing his wife, Michael called his mistress. He then went out of his way to make it seem as if Vicky was still alive. He used her phone to respond to texts and pretended to be devastated about Vicky supposedly leaving him for someone else. In the meantime, he was spending pretty much all his time with his mistress and already had plans to move in with her. Michael stung to his claims that Vicky died during a bedroom game gone wrong, but the jury needed just three hours to decide that the prosecution had proved its case. Needless to say, he's no longer spending time with his lovers, but is instead serving a prison sentence of 17 years to life. 3. Bradley Jenkins In June 2019, an Illinois woman's terrifying last moments alive were captured in an audio recording on her phone as she fought with her husband and fell from a parking garage. 30-year-old Bradley Jenkins and 27-year-old Alyssa Martin tied the knot in Las Vegas just a few weeks earlier and attended a Cardinals game with some co-workers that evening. 
The couple started arguing during the game and continued to go at it in the parking garage as they made their way to the seventh level. Police were called to the scene around two in the morning and arrived to find Jenkins straddling Martin on the sidewalk right next to the garage. Martin had fallen to her death and Jenkins looked to be drunk and covered in blood. Investigators found Martin's phone up on the seventh floor of the garage, which was laying on the ground with the camera still recording. Footage from the moments leading up to Martin's fall showed her and Jenkins fighting. At one point, Martin yelled at Jenkins to stop punching her, while Jenkins hurled racial slurs against Martin. A few moments later, a loud scream rang out and the sound of the young woman hitting the pavement was heard. Jenkins was charged with third-degree domestic assault. He later pleaded guilty to a reduced misdemeanor assault charge and was ordered to two years of probation. Under the terms of his sentence, he was required to stay out of any additional legal trouble and ordered to take domestic violence prevention classes. 2. Zach Dawson In November 2022, a concerned friend of Alderson, West Virginia resident Marissa Dawson, discovered the mother of five unresponsive on the floor of her home. Marissa's car was also missing from the driveway, and the 27-year-old had suffered major facial trauma. Inside the house, crime scene technicians found a horrifically bloody scene. Evidence indicated that the victim had been thrown around the home and had hit her head on several objects. The killer changed Marissa's body into clean clothes and tried to clean up the scene a bit, but had given up and fled. Police issued a be on the lookout for Marissa's missing car, which was pulled over a short while later. Behind the wheel was the victim's 34-year-old husband, Zach Dawson, who appeared to have bloodstains on his clothing. He confessed to fatally striking his wife during a fight, changing Marissa's clothes after he killed her and trying to clean the crime scene. Zach told investigators that he blacked out from anger and that he knew he'd messed up once he came to his senses. But it was already too late to undo what had been done, and he was arrested on suspicion of murder. He remains held without bond while awaiting trial. And now for number one. But if you want to hear more bizarre and crazy stories, stay tuned after the video for some more content. 1. Brian Humphrey after divorcing and finding their way back to each other, 36-year-old Cassandra Petrie and 34-year-old Brian Humphrey decided to get remarried on New Year's Eve in 2010. They had their honeymoon at a hotel in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, but when it seemed like they'd overstayed their planned visit, Cassandra's sister started to worry and asked the police to conduct a welfare check. Officers entered the hotel room and found Cassandra stabbed to death and Brian nowhere to be found. Brian already had a pretty lengthy criminal record, with past charges including assault, burglary, resisting arrest, and evading arrest. A manhunt was immediately launched, and he was captured the next day in Riceville, Tennessee after a police pursuit. He was initially charged with first-degree murder, but took a plea deal and pleaded guilty to second-degree murder in exchange for a 35-year sentence. Records show that Humphrey was convicted of another second-degree murder charge while behind bars in prison. He received a 40-year sentence, which means he'll be in his early 80s if he lives to see his release date, which is currently set in 2057. Number 10. The Zombie Doll First, the Cadillacs married a zombie on September 15, 2018. This zombie is not exactly what you might be thinking. It's not a man who's been reanimated from the grave, but instead an inanimate doll, which might be worse. It's a creepy zombie doll, something you'd see set up on a lawn or on somebody's front step for Halloween. Felicity is from Massachusetts, and she was 20 years old when she married the zombie doll. She says the doll's name is Kelly Rossi and that she's 37 years old. And believe it or not, Felicity has quite a few other dolls in her collection too. In fact, eight of them attended the viral ceremony, which she had in Rhode Island for about $500. That was mostly just to cover her wedding dress and a tuxedo for the zombie. Now, when I say a zombie doll, that's exactly what it is. It's missing part of its face. It's smeared with fake blood all over its body, and it looks downright terrifying to most people. Felicity married the thing because she said it made her feel closer to it and more intimate. 
She went on to say, and this might be a little bit of a TMI situation, that after the ceremony, she promptly consummated the marriage. How that worked out, we don't know, and we'd rather not ask. Number 9. Man and Smartphone Aaron Chervenak, a 34-year-old man from Los Angeles, took part in a bizarre ceremony in Las Vegas back in 2016. Aaron married his smartphone. He traveled all the way to Sin City, booked himself some time at the Little Vegas Chapel and married his phone. But this had nothing to do with love. The man wasn't romantically involved with his device. Instead, Aaron said he was trying to make a point about the growing attachment society has to their phones and how hopelessly we rely on them. Aaron said that the way we use our cell phones to calm us, to lull us to sleep, and to ease our minds is basically like a relationship, a toxic one at that. So he took it one step further and tied the knot with his device. In a way, Aaron said his smartphone had already been his longest relationship. You might think it would be difficult to set up a wedding between a man and a phone, but it was actually pretty easy. Once Aaron got to Vegas, he contacted the chapel, explained his situation, and they were thrilled to host the event, probably for the press attention. Aaron showed up in a bubblegum pink car, dressed in a snazzy suit, his iPhone dressed in a sleek white case. There were some guests, a brief ceremony, and the two were wed, simple as that. But Aaron didn't actually kiss his smartphone at the altar, and the marriage was never officially recognized by the state of Nevada. Number 8. Woman and Dog A woman named Elizabeth Hode married her golden retriever in 2019 at the ripe age of 49. According to her, she didn't need a man in her life and was much happier spending the rest of her time on this earth with her dog, Logan. So she married her furry companion on live TV on the British talk show The Morning. Elizabeth had actually tried to find love before marrying her dog. She claims to have gone on over 200 dates, but just couldn't find the right man for her. So in the end, she gave up on dating, on ever meeting a man, and chose to commit herself to her four-legged friend. What might surprise you is that Elizabeth was actually a swimsuit model and objectively pretty good looking. She had even been in relationships with sports stars like James Hunt, the Formula One race car driver, and Steve Ballesteros, the famous golfer. She had a 25-year-old son at the time of the wedding, so it's not like she was out of options. Elizabeth just prefers the company of her dog, and now the two are happily married. Number 7. Marriage at a Funeral In Thailand back in 2016, a woman got married at a funeral. Her name is Nan Tiparat, and this was by far one of the strangest ceremonies we've ever heard of. Nan's lover died suddenly after a heart attack, leaving Nan an emotional wreck. She had always dreamt of their wedding day, and they had planned on holding hands for the rest of their lives. And then, all of a sudden, her fiancé Fiat's heart gave out, and he was dead just like that. It was an especially big shock, since he hadn't shown any signs of illness before the heart attack. There weren't any plans in place. It was all very sudden and unexpected. But Nan wasn't ready to give up on her love just yet. So, at his funeral, she showed up in a wedding dress and had an unofficial ceremony while her fiancé's dead body lay on a table covered in a pink blanket with teddy bears on it. The wedding was not officially recognized by the Thai government, but at least Nan finally got the union she wanted so badly, even if it was with a corpse. And in any case, she called it more of a tribute than the real deal. Because according to Nan, she knows both of them would be together for eternity in the next life. She just wanted to make the wedding official in her own heart before burying her lover. Number 6. The Woman and Her Cats In 2014, Barbarella Bushner celebrated her 10th wedding anniversary. She had been married for nearly a decade to a pair of cats. And according to Barbarella, she's over the moon with joy. It all started when Barbarella and her partner split after they'd been together for 7 years. The 48-year-old never thought she would make a real connection or find love ever again. But then came the cats, and love entered her life in a much different way than she'd expected. Ten years after she married her feline husbands, Spider and Lugosi, Barbarella was feeling happier than ever. Barbarella is originally from London, but last we heard, she was living in the Canary Islands, working as a web designer. 
She said that whenever she'd been in a relationship with a human, it always ended up a huge mess. There would be arguments, unwanted chatting, and just stress in general. But now that she's been married to her cats for so long, she's realized how unnecessary human relationships are. Her cats don't argue with her, she doesn't have to listen to them complain, and they're all very happy together. As for the details of the wedding, that's a bit complicated. Three years after she adopted the cats, Barbarella married them on a website and officially tied the knot on January 9, 2004. She got a certificate of marriage, but it's not any kind of officially legal document. Ever since the marriage, she's had to deal with people calling her names too. Some say she's a polygamist since she married two cats instead of one, and some have even called her incestuous since the cats are technically brothers. As long as she's happy though, right? Number 5. The Superfan Ollie London is a K-pop superfan, and when we say super, we mean it. The 29-year-old London native is what you might call obsessed with the Korean performer Park Jimin. He spent over $150,000 on plastic surgery to look more like the popular BTS singer, and finally pushed things as far as they could go by marrying a cardboard cutout of Jimin back in 2020. Ollie London traveled all the way from Britain with a fully sized cardboard cutout of his idol to Las Vegas. Then, in an emotional ceremony, the British man married a piece of cardboard in front of an Elvis Presley impersonator at the Viva Las Vegas wedding chapel. It doesn't get any weirder than that. Following the ceremony, Ollie said it was the happiest day of his life, but he admitted he's not sure what he's going to do next. Still, he's happy to be officially married to his idol even if it's only a cutout that looks like Jimin. And by the way, Ollie says he is a monogamist and is strictly loyal to his relationship. He also has no plans of finding a real human being to be with, supposedly for the rest of his life. Number 4. The Kazakh Love Doll Yuri Tolochko is a man from Kazakhstan that considers himself to be an athlete and blogger. He also just happens to be intimately involved with Margot, his girlfriend. He proposed to her in December 2019, and surprise surprise, she said yes. Although, to be completely fair, it was Yuri who said yes for her, since Margot isn't your average kind of girl. She doesn't have a working mouth, a voice box, or even a heartbeat. Margot is what you'd call a love doll, a life-size doll woman made of skin-like material that's almost as close as you can get to the real thing. Yuri and Margot are also somewhat famous and have a good following online. Ever since they started their relationship, Yuri has posted photos and videos of the love story for his 40,000 followers on Instagram. And that's not all he posts either. He also shares the explicit pictures and videos of what he and Margot get up to behind closed doors. After the proposal in 2019, the pandemic hit worldwide and the young couple's wedding plans were ruined. The ceremony had to be postponed for months and months and it wasn't until late 2020 that they could finally tie the knot like Yuri had been looking forward to. He says Margot has a tender soul inside her synthetic gelatin body, and they're looking forward to a long, happy life together. Number 3. Hologram Bride A man in Japan vowed to never fall in love with a real, living, breathing woman. His name is Akihiko Kondo, a school administrator in his 30s, who recently married a hologram pledging his undying allegiance to her. She's an anime hologram of a popular virtual singer named Hatsune Miku, and according to what Kondo told local news, he's never cheated on her in his entire life and has only ever been in love with the holographic woman. But things get a little dark once we dig deeper. Kondo says his holographic wife is modeled after a girl that's only 16 years old, even if she is an anime character. In fact, that's part of the appeal for him. Because she's a hologram, his wife will never grow old. Still, it's a bit creepy. In case you haven't heard of hologram singers, they're actually extremely popular and called Vocaloids. Akihiko's hologram wife recently sold out 3D concerts all over Asia and even one in New York City back in 2016. Kondo interacts with his hologram through an extremely expensive desktop that costs about $3,000. She appears in the center of a tube-like compartment where she moves around and speaks. 
but the real expense was the pair's wedding. Kondo dropped an astounding $17,600 on a very realistic ceremony. Since he couldn't bring his desktop device, he had a large doll of Miku instead, with a wedding ring he stuck to a wrist. The marriage certificate was issued by the company that produced the hologram, although they had to warn Kondo that the relationship wouldn't be recognized by any kind of government. If this strange wedding came as a shock to you, you'll be shocked to know that these hologram makers have issued nearly 3,700 certificates to other people just like Kondo. Number 2. Marrying Yourself Brazilian model Chris Galera was married in September 2021, but less than a year later, she decided it was time to get a divorce. What makes this whole situation strange is that the model was married to herself. Just 90 days after marrying herself, she decided to divorce herself. She says she doesn't want to be tied down to anyone, even the person in the mirror, since she met somebody new. The desire to only be with yourself is something known as sologamy. Chris Galera, at 33 years old, made the choice to be with nobody but herself for the rest of time. Until she changed her mind, that is. She made headlines in Brazil after showing up to her wedding in the front of a Catholic church in Sao Paulo, where no groom ever turned up. Chris said that over those 90 days, she was happy while it lasted. But in that time of the marriage, Chris claims to have matured. She realized just how strong and determined she is as a woman, and that it's okay if she wants to be with someone while still loving herself. It might be important to know at this point that Chris is extremely famous and well-known. She does nude shoots for Playboy. She has hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram and has gotten quite a bit of attention online for marrying herself. Number 1. Triplets a Congolese man married a set of triplets. According to the reports coming out of the Democratic Republic of Congo, all three of the triplets proposed to him at the same time, and he agreed with an instant yes. This rather strange wedding took place in South Kivu, and you'll never believe the story leading up to the union of these four individuals. It all began when Luizo met one of the triplets, a woman named Natalie. The pair quickly fell in love. But when Luisa was introduced to her twin sisters, things started getting weird. He immediately fell for the sisters as well, and they took quite a liking to him too. Rather than each of them finding their own man, they decided it would be easier if all three just married the same guy. The sisters had been close their whole lives, and this just seemed like a natural thing for them to do. When they proposed to Luisa, he said he was shocked and excited. But since he had fallen in love with the girls and the three had fallen in love with him, there was nothing that could stop them from being together. Still, it's not all good. For one thing, Luisa's parents disagreed with the marriage and didn't even come to watch the ceremony. Thanks for watching. What are some deal breakers that would make you end a marriage just days after tying the knot? Let us know in the comments below.